Good morning and welcome to Christ Church in Bloomfield in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. I'm Mother Diana and I'm the rector of this parish and I'm pleased to be able to welcome you here today. Uh, we apologize in advance for if, there, if there's any technical difficulties. This is our first Sunday without our beloved Director of Communications serving as Tech Usher. Uh, and so just be patient with us. If you need the bulletin, it is available on our website. Uh, go to our website, ChristChurchEpiscopal.org, and, and click on this week's bulletin. And the full bulletin, along with children's uh, bulletins, are available there, as well as our Sunday paper. Also available on our website is the virtual offering plate, um, which uh, we hope you will take advantage of in this time of great need, both in this church and in and, and other places. Uh, we welcome also this morning our guest our, our organist and uh, parishioner, Bonnie Gustafson, um, and we are grateful to have her filling in for our interim director of music. Um, so welcome everyone. Blessed be God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God, forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O oh God, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows in injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous and blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crushed the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord pleads their cause and despoils of life those who despoil them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We will say the appointed psalm responsibly by full verse with the people saying the verses printed in bold. They who trust in God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand out about Jerusalem, so does God stand around about the people. From this time forth, forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O God, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, God will lead them away with the evildoers, but peace upon Israel. The second reading is from the Epistle of St. James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Seraphonician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee to the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and sent him, said to him, Ephaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God's words be spoken, may God's words be heard. Amen. First, uh, before I begin, happy Labor Day, everyone. This is a time when we remember those who labor for what we need, what we enjoy, and in many cases, for what we take for granted. They are the ones we see and the ones we don't see. So we pause to thank them for their service in the world. Now back to the sermon. So anything happened since last we met? Anything at all? Seriously, that was one heck of a storm we had this past week. And so many are still suffering, having lost their home or water and power, or for some far worse, their loved ones. We here were not immune to, from that wretched storm as the local creek swelled. Bloomfield Avenue became a river of rapids, and more than two feet of water crashed against our front doors, seeping underneath and leaving a trail of water, mud, and debris. A small group that was here that night had to shelter in place until 1 a.m. Still, while there is yet work to be done to clean up, we are fortunate not to have had far more damage, and everyone returned safely home. There was something prophetic, though, about the storm walloping our church. Lord knows, we have had our share of storms lately. The COVID pandemic has taken a toll on our finances, our school enrollment, and very possibly our future. Yet when I posted pictures on Facebook of the early part of the cleanup from the storm Ida that Don, our sexton, and I did the morning after, a friend replied, you can't kill Christchurch BGR. 
I would have to agree. We have a resiliency to weather the storms and come out even stronger because we have faith enough to know that there is no darkness Christ's light cannot defeat and that should death come, there is resurrection on the other side. So we move without fear into the future, guided by the Holy Spirit and trusting in God's grace. We also know that we have to roll up our sleeves and be bold in our faith. We're a bit like that meme often posted on social media. They said to her, you cannot withstand the storm. And she responded, I am the storm. And whenever I see that, I'm reminded of the woman we hear about in the gospel today. In our gospel passage, it strikes me from the start that the woman isn't even given a name. Like so many women in the Bible, she is without that most basic form of identity. She is a Gentile of Seraphonician origin. Now, why is it they can name all the apostles, the entire genealogy of nations, but they can't get this woman a name? Not, not here or in the Matthew version of the story where she is simply known as the Canaanite woman. Well, let's give her one. As I did the last time the scripture come, came around, I suggest we call her Phoenicia. Now, Phoenicia comes to Jesus, bows down at his feet. She was humbly pleading for mercy, not for herself, mind you, but for her daughter, who was plagued by a demon. Now, Jesus, well, we, we expect him to grant mercy, do a miracle, and be on his way. But that is not what we get in this story. Jesus, our Christ, not only initially refuses to help and insults her people in the process, calling them dogs. He tells them that his food, his grace, is for the children of Israel. Outsiders are not welcome at the table. Not welcome at the table? Seraphonicians need not enter, Israeli, is, Israelite seating only? Really? But like others who have stood ground against those who seek to marginalize them, Phoenicia was not about to be cast aside, not even by the Messiah, who in this moment would initially appear to be showing much more of his fully human side than his fully divine nature. No, she was not about to be sent away with her Seraphonician tail between her legs. Defiantly, she answered Jesus that even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the table. And her faith and persistence is met with God's grace. And so this gospel story does not end with the denial of healing for Phoenicia's poor daughter, Jesus, who in the very verses we heard today after this encounter gives sight and hearing to one who is blind and mute, who gives, I'm sorry, who gives uh, voice and hearing to one who is mute, who gives sight to the blind, our Savior removes the blinders from his own eyes to see Phoenicia and unplugs his own ears to hear the pleas for her daughter. Then Jesus' fully divine self begins to shine through. He blesses her daughter, and with the grace that he knows is unending and abundant, she is healed. Phoenicia was the storm. And I suspect that Jesus was changed by the experience of that Phoenician storm, thanks be to God. I like this woman. I really do. She was pesky, faithful, and strong. Her heart grieved for her daughter's pain, and she was not to be so easily dismissed from the grace that would heal her child because she believed that Jesus could heal her. She was a storm Jesus was not about to still. Now, when those in power encounter women like Phoenicia, strong women, women who refuse to acquiesce, who believe in their dreams, who have that audacity to have the faith to have that move mountains, we call them agitators, extremists, angry feminists, uppity women. Well, you know what? The world needs more people like her. Let's hear it for uppity women. And thankfully, we've been blessed with a few uppity women and girls of our own age, and I don't have to make up names for them. They made sure that history knew who they were. Sojourner Truth, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Harriet Tubman, Dorothy Day, 
Da Aung San Suu Kyi, Shirin Abadi, Rosa Parks, Malala Yousafzai, Greta Thunberg, and so many more. These women fought against the boundaries that were meant to keep them and others out. And I want to tell you about another one, one I met just over a week ago while participating in a march on Washington for the right of all people to have a say in how they are governed, to have the freedom to vote. We were there to make some good trouble, as the late representative and civil rights activist John Lewis used to say. Good trouble. Now that is something I think our scriptural Phoenicia would love, because that is exactly what she was up to in this gospel. Still, while I love people who put their faith into action in the world, like Representative Lewis, men so often get far more attention for what they say and do than women. So I want to get back to telling you about the woman I met at that march. It was a hot and humid day, as is common in August in D.C. I grew up in that area, and Lordy, the humidity will kill you if the heat doesn't. Still about 50,000, the news said, gathered on that anniversary of the initial march on Washington for rights. We gathered to stand up for those who were being marginalized, and no amount of heat was going to stop us. As we were waiting to begin, I began chatting with an older woman next to me. She was with a group from West Philly who had traveled by bus to be there, and this was not her first march, not by a long shot. As we marched past the White House and towards the U.S. Capitol and on to our final destination on the Mall, she recounted how she had been marching since 1973, and it was clear she wasn't about to stop anytime soon. As an African-American and a woman, she knew more than most the tyranny of oppression. As we passed the Museum of African American History, I could see tears in her eyes as she told me about the first time she went there. It was something she never thought she would ever see in her lifetime. Her story, the story of her people told honestly by them, for them, and for all the world. She had been there many times since, and as she told me, the experience never dissipates for her heart and her very soul. And here she was today, shouting with all out for all the rest of us, for those without a voice as we marched past there. She and I were making some good trouble, which I later found out was something she did quite often. We later got separated when I, when I stopped to take a picture, but I was grateful she had given me her business card. And when I went to look her up, I found out that she is well known in West Philly. In an article about her, and there were a few, Aminata, also known as Sandra Calhoun, there were many stories. And I want to share with you uh, one that mostly came from one particular article, a link to which I'll post in the sermon later. Once, when Aminata, Aminata was um, walking from her house to the bus stop, a brick fell from the third story of a vacant building and nearly hit her. When that happened, she recounted, whenever I was going, wherever I was going, was no longer important. I turned around, I went back to my house, typed up what I experienced and took photos and sent them to the, my councilwoman's office. Through tireless advocacy for her neighborhood and staying in constant contact with her councilwoman's office and the 311, city's 311 service, that dangerous building was finally demolished. Amanada didn't stop there. Once the building was gone, she began advocating for a mural to be painted on the exposed wall of the adjacent house. Persistence paid off again. She received confirmation that the mural arts program would be painting a mural there of Edward Bradley, the former television commentator for 60 Minutes and a West Philadelphia resident. CBS Channel 3 contributed 25,000 toward the mural. But wait, there's more. She then approached Neighborhood Time Exchange, an artist residency with a strong commu neighborhood community service requirement. And working with artists and residents, make and read, 
Amanada had decorative boards made and installed over the plywood covered windows of a door of a vacant row home on her block. Quote, people have pulled over when they drive by to ask how they could get artistic design boards on properties in their neighborhoods, Amanada reported. Through learning about zoning and urban design at the Central Pennsylvania Institute for Science and Technology, Amanada's love for architecture was rekindled and she was inspired to continue onward to get a degree in architectural design. She then distinguished herself as, at a public forum for the Urban Think Space Project, which aims to create learning opportunities in public outdoor spaces. The members of her breakout group were so impressed with her input, they asked her to join the design team. There is much more to her story, much more, but suffice it to say that Amanada knows how to make good trouble. Amanada is the storm. If there's more, more work to be done then and now, and the Phoenicians and Amanadas of the world are still fighting, still kicking up some good trouble. And we need to stand beside them and be like them. We need more people in this world to be like them, to be sure, because right now, there are a whole lot of fully human folks who are pushing people away, discarding them, ignoring their pleas, building walls to keep them out, or prisons to bind them. Thankfully, there are those like Phoenicia in this gospel passage, and Amanada from West Philly, who are not ones to be pushed aside, not when someone they love or something they believe in is at stake. These are the ones who will fight for the Seraphonician children today. So who are those Seraphonician children? The children of the world who are not able to learn in safe environments. Women who are not able to learn, who, are, who live in fear of being sold into slavery, sexually mutilated, or forced to bear a rapist child. Our neighbors in the South who die crossing the desert to get into our country to escape war and violence. Gay couples denied the right to love as God intends all around the world. And people of all races, ages, religions, languages, physical and mental abilities, and gender identities that are systematically denied what is accorded others. These are the Seraphonicians of today who cry out for justice, for freedom, from oppression, for the right to breathe, and for the simple dignity to be fed spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Yet far too often these cries fall on deaf ears. These Seraphonicians of today are willingly unseen by those who are blinded by fear, ignorance, and greed. It's as though we see the other as a threat to our own daily bread, not even wanting to share the crumbs from our tables. It's as if we fear there, there's just not enough to go around that their quest for freedom, justice, and dignity of self-sufficiency will somehow diminish our own. We respond as Jesus did initially, attempting to hoard uh, grace for our own people and forget the rest of the story, that there is more than enough grace for all of God's creation. And isn't that amazing? <laughs> Isn't it amazing that when it comes to God's love, there is a never-ending supply? Isn't it a wonder how God's grace is without limits? But more than that, when we feed another, we are fed. When we serve another, we are blessed. When we fight against the injustice done to our brothers and sisters, we are freed from bondage. When we open our hearts to the infinite embrace of God's love, we are showered with unending grace to do God's work in the world, and all that we do affects all of God's creation. If we live as we are called to live as followers of Jesus, we will never turn our backs on those in need. We will fight tirelessly for those in the margins and not solely those who look, think, love, speak, or act as we do. We will be the uppity people we need to be to stand defiant in the face of power and speak the truth. We will be Phoenicia, the Seraphonician woman. We will be Amanada from West Philly. We will be the storm causing some mighty good trouble. And the world will be a better place for it. And our souls will be filled with Christ's peace.
Amen. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Mother Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the mother. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's compassion and generosity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. O oh God, we pray for the church. Give it the courage to translate faith into action. Guide the hands and feet of the faithful to answer the needs so abundant in this world. God, in your mercy. We pray for streams, pools, springs of water, oceans, lakes, and rivers. Protect all water sources that refresh and sustain the land, animals, and human beings. God, in your mercy. We pray for the world's leaders, that they act for the good of all. We pray for all workers, those who can find no work, those who work in unsafe conditions, and those who labor, whose labor is exploited. We pray also for our neighborhoods of Bloomfield and Glen Ridge. God, in your mercy. We pray for those who lack daily food, who are fearful, and who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Come and save them. We pray now for those on our parish prayer list. God, in your mercy. We pray for this assembly. Make it a place of equity, welcome, and full inclusion. Empower us to live our radical hospitality. God, in your mercy. Oh God, we remember all who have gone before us and give thanks for their faith and their works. Give us the fortitude to carry on in the work left for us. God, in your mercy. We, uh pray especially for all those who are still suffering from the storm damage, both in Louisiana and all up and down the, uh, the northeast coast, uh, and especially those in Bloomfield and Glen Ridge area, Montclair area, who are still underwater, still trying to recover. Um, and we give thanks as well for, the, um, for all those who have pitched in to help and for the first responders and fire departments who are who are uh, really engaging in this work, and those you now name either silently or aloud. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful of God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace, Zoom, Facebook. Peace, everybody, choir and everybody. Before I forget, uh, when we get to the communion, you're going to hear me chanting words that are not what's printed in, the, in what's called the proper preface. That's the part after the Sursum Corda where we have a dialogue back and forth. The Lord be with you and also with you. Um, that is not uh, Candace's fault. That is entirely mine. I decided to switch the Eucharistic prayer, which is correct, which happens after the Holy, 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 the Sanctus. But that part beforehand, which is called in Episcopal ease, the proper preface, um, uh, is the Epiphany one, and I'll be doing the one for Pentecost. It'll be changed later. So it'll give you an opportunity to put your bulletins down and to listen, um, if you would. Uh, in fact, I would encourage you to do that throughout the Eucharist. Um, I think um, many of you, unless you're visiting with us or new to the Episcopal Church, in which case, follow along, um, know the prayers that are coming up, and, and um, uh, so it'll give you a chance to do that. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we had quite the storm, and we had quite the storm damage. There's some more photos that have been posted on Facebook and also in the website connection here. But we need volunteers today um, to, uh, we got up the water, Don and I got all the water soaked up and anything that was wet, we got rid of uh, so it wouldn't uh, mold. And we've been running fans since then because even though the water may look like it's gone. You want to make sure you get all that moisture up. However, the, the creek really dumped a lot of mud and debris. And so it's very muddy in uh, the narthex there, uh, right inside our front doors and also across the labyrinth. And so what we need is 1230 today, if you are able, and I know many of you are trying to still dig out of your own homes, and we understand that, but if you're able to bring brooms, mops, and buckets, because what we found to be effective was we wet the surface, we mop up as much as we can, we let it dry, the mud dries out, and we're able to sweep it up, and then we start again um, until we can get this all cleaned up. Um, so uh, I really hope to see so, um, many of you here. Please bring a mask as well if we're going to be uh, near one another because we'll be inside, um, okay? Um, and of course, um, we are so happy to announce that our director of communications uh, has a, now has a baby daughter, she and her husband Chris, and there's pictures of Brighton Eloise Whitaker and, and many blessings on her and uh, our parents. So Candace is on maternity leave for the next couple of months, and we wish them well, and uh, we sure do miss them. Um, our nursery school is opening the day after tomorrow. Yay! Um, we still have spots available. Please, please, please let people know um, and the book club is reading Bradshaw, The Family, A New Way of Creating Self-Esteem. Um, I, I just want to say that uh, we had planned to have in-person worship start next week. That will not be happening. We are still orange in this county. Um, please, please, if you are not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. If you are vaccinated and get your third dose, get your third dose. Um, Wear a mask everywhere. We've got to get this pandemic under control, so please. However, what I've done, and it's not posted on the website, is added a communion in the park uh, next Sunday. So I'll meet you out there. You need to be masked, um, and I will uh, give you communion like I did in the fall. Just come, get your communion, and go. There won't be any worship service. Uh, I am happy to tell you our Journey Forward team has completed all the plans and submitted them to the diocese. So we are ready the moment that that um, color for COVID goes from orange to yellow. Uh, and we are ready for in-person worship at that point. So for now, uh, we will not be doing the, the parish day cleanup. Other, we have enough to clean up today. 
We will not be doing that next Saturday. We will not be doing in-person worship next Sunday. And, and again, a reminder, because this has been really getting out of control, um, I will never ask you, nor will anyone in the church, ask you for gift cards, um, to click links, uh, or give you cryptic messages um, around meeting with us, unless we've already been in dialogue, okay? Please, 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 there's an example in your Sunday paper of just how sneaky this can be. Um, that's an actual email that came to Candace that looks like it came from our warden, Denise Massey-Williams, but the email address is, is not correct. So please, please, please be vigilant. Same thing with the bishop's office. They will never, ever ask you for that. Um, and it's a shame that in this world there are people who will do that, who will take advantage of people's good natures, um, but they're out there. Uh, so let us now, before we continue on, um, uh, before we continue on, let us uh, pray for those who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week. For anniversaries. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the Church. Send your blessing upon these wedded partners who celebrate the anniversary of the promises made to each other. And grant them your grace that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for those celebrating a birthday um, this week, who included uh, Paris, um, who uh, uh, used to be one of our youth, but as is... Um, now a uh, full young adult, and anyway, um, let's pray for her and all others. Watch over your children, O God, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Mother, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the wisdom of God and the love of God and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and hearts in this world. And the blessing of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, be with you now and always. Amen.
have the dismissal. I just want to thank the Truberg family, the Christ Church Georgia uh, contingent uh, for filling in so we wonderfully well on Zoom uh, uh, for our Director of Communications. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all for joining us this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, may God be with you, all those you love, and all those you pray for. <laughs>